guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Ashley of Ashley Nail Wellness, where we talk about wellness, travel, self-love, and a little bit of girl talk. So if any of these topics interest you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you also turn on notifications so you're notified on when we chat. Um, let's dive into it. <laughs> if you've seen the title of this video, what it's like having lived in six countries alone by the time I'm 23. So this video is a little bit directionless. I'm not gonna be really giving many tips. I'm sort of just gonna be sharing my experience about what it's been like, you know, living on my own, um, both in my home country and five other countries abroad. Right now I'm living in Mexico. I'm just about to secure my apartment for the next several months. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk a bit about that, what countries I found to be amazing, which countries I sort of, you know, maybe wouldn't recommend, but just because of like my personal experiences, solo traveling there or being there, living there, whatever. Um, but yeah, so if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're either kind of done with your home country or you're just looking for some inspiration to start your 2020 off with something incredible and amazing and so out of your comfort zone. For me, uh, the first country I ever lived in was Costa Rica. Costa Rica is an incredible place. It's in Central America. And I lived on the Caribbean coast in Puerto Viejo. And I had actually lived there twice because I fell in love with it so much. There is so much to love about Puerto Viejo. I find that being there, it is very kind of surfer-like, slow town small town vibe you know you can take a bicycle anywhere basically the beaches are very calm and empty there's lots of um, yogis and surfers so it's a very chill vibe um, it's definitely for the nature traveler so if you don't like a lot of bugs um, or in any sort of insect any sort of like lizard or reptile you probably wouldn't enjoy Costa Rica as much because their main thing is like ecotourism and they preserve their wildlife and nature very well so there's lots of wildlife sanctuaries there's lots of just ways to immerse yourself in nature and so when I was sort of going through I wouldn't say I was necessarily going through something but when I really needed to sort of get more into myself become more balanced and I wanted to really dive into my yoga journey. I remember really wanting to move to Costa Rica. The first time I lived there, it was just a little apartment. And then the second time it was kind of like a treehouse vibe. And both were incredible. I fully recommend. It is one of those countries that the people are very welcoming, friendly. Um, you really have very little complaints about feeling warm and welcomed there, feeling like you belong because people are just so happy, you know? It's a, such a different pace from living in Canada even. Although people in Canada are very polite and usually very kind in my experience, it's just a whole other world. Like people are genuinely happy to be alive and um, it's, yeah, it's a very different experience. So moving from Costa Rica, Moving on from Costa Rica, I moved to Thailand for um, Southeast Asia, I guess, for um, several months. I went to Thailand to do my yoga teacher training and I ended up staying a little bit before and a little bit after that. So I can really just enjoy uh, being in Southeast Asia. I don't know anyone in my life who had ever gone. And so it was a really big thing for me to, you know, pick up and move to Southeast Asia. 
Um, I know there were a lot of people in my different travel groups that kind of wanted to steer like black people away from visiting Southeast Asia because, um, or visiting Asia in general, because there's this um, narrative that if you'll experience a lot of racism. And honestly, that couldn't have been further from the truth for me. I had <laughs> amazing experiences, so I'm really grateful that for me personally, I didn't run into anything like that. Um, people were nothing but welcoming, welcoming and friendly. I just got to enjoy being there in the heat and the humidity, visiting elephant sanctuaries and um, meeting people in hostels and then eventually getting my place there. It was really an incredible experience. I loved being able to navigate everything through riding a scooter or getting on the back of a scooter or um, taking really affordable taxis places and little um, ride chairs. So that was amazing. The food was incredible. I think at, at that time I was still vegan. So um, if you are a vegan traveler, I highly recommend going to Thailand. The, incredible variety of fruit and just like vegan and vegetarian restaurants is just in complete abundance so you'd probably really enjoy both Southeast Asia and um, Costa Rica for that front. Um, otherwise living there and living in Southeast Asia because I also spent a lot of time in Bali Indonesia as well I loved it completely. I would go back in a heartbeat. It was only difficult because of the time change since one, I am a remote worker and two, uh, a lot of my family and friends live on the East Coast time zone. It was difficult to keep up with, you know, that being so far ahead, it was both 12 and 13 hours. And so a lot of the times when I wanted to chat with my friends, they were, you know, either going to sleep or just getting up. And so it was a little bit tricky on that front. Of course, you're gonna make friends on like that side of the world and, you know, grow accustomed to being um, so far ahead of everyone. But, you know, it, it has its perks and it has its downfalls. And that was definitely one of them for me. But if that isn't a worry for you, then you're gonna love both Bali and um, all over Thailand. I didn't get to explore much else of Indonesia. I mostly stayed within Bali because I was remote working and I didn't want to hop from place to place. But villa prices are very affordable if you work on the Western dollar. Um, so that was definitely a huge, huge um, reason why I wanted to stay for so long. And you just get so much for your dollar. The food, uh, especially at like the little mom and pop shops in Indonesia, are so good. Um, you get so much for what you're paying, and uh, you can tell it's made with love because it's actually flavorful. You know, I t I find that a lot of spots in Canada, you can tell they're not really cooked with as much love, so it might be bland. Um, and even when you're in Thailand or in Bali, like. The food that's healthy is still very delicious. I'm glad that there's still a lot of flavor with it because, you know, when you're traveling so much, when you're living abroad, you want to make sure that you're still kind of living somewhat balanced, you know, trying to get in fruits and vegetables and like healthy proteins regularly. It's not always living off of street food. Although a lot of the street food was very healthy. So I enjoyed my time in Southeast Asia. I am very excited to go back. I had actually booked a flight to move back to Thailand, but uh, the restrictions sort of came back, so it was a very difficult process to make. Um, after living in Southeast Asia, I went home during um, the beginning of Corona so that I can settle down there. So I got my first actual apartment in Canada, and living alone in Canada was honestly a dream come true. I loved being near my friends and my family while also having my own space to you know have my own routines, get my own food, um, basically doing everything I was doing for myself while I was traveling, but being able to enjoy it in the in my own space, you know, like making it my vibe, you know, with my little cat Luna, we just had a great time together. And although it was very isolating um, during Corona and having everything shut down at the same time, it was what I needed for that time. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all that I learned about myself living alone in Canada. And I was definitely on a very solid routine. So I feel like that is kind of what I need, like <laughs> the space to myself in order to get to that level of structure, I guess. 
Um, so after that, I had originally booked a flight to Mexico. This was about a year and a half of living in Canada that I booked the flight. And for some reason, my flight ended up being canceled. And I didn't really look into why it was canceled. I just sort of went off on a whim and was like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to be somewhere else right now. So I booked a flight to Portugal instead. And I fell in love with Lisbon completely. Lisbon is probably my favorite city in the world. It has so much to offer. There's just so many incredible people that you'll constantly be meeting. It's a very good place to live if you're like a digital nomad. Um, if you know of the site called Nomads List, it's almost always at the top, if not permanently at the top because it's just amazing. Um, the only thing that's a little bit maybe frustrating right now, but I guess it's for everywhere, is that the rent prices are shooting up in Lisbon, so it's very competitive. You know, you have to be on the ball. Um, but that's what it was like in Canada. That's what it's like here in Mexico right now. That's what it's basically like for the world because of our housing crisis situation. But other than that, like, this is an incredible place to live. There are always things to do. Um, people are so friendly and kind and, um, yeah, I highly recommend. I also got to visit like Sesembra and Porto when I was living in Lisbon and I recommend both of those areas. I didn't get down south, so that's why I definitely need to go back. Um, but I am concerned because when I do go back to Lisbon, I know that I will not leave. So it'll probably be my next home base. Um, I just didn't want to stay there during the winter time, but there is 300 days of sun there, so it's very hard to go wrong if you are a snowbird who likes to flee whenever it's winter time and you come from a cold climate like I do. Uh, yeah, so next I uh, was Turkey, and Turkey was very exciting. I didn't expect to go to Turkey ever. I also don't know anybody in my life who's ever been to Turkey. And so it was very new to me. I knew nothing and I did a whole lot less research about Turkey than I did when I was going to Southeast Asia. Because I was like, you know, like I'm a traveler, I've been a solo traveler for so long that like, let me just, you know, take this risk and go. And it did not disappoint at all. Turkey, um, I lived in Istanbul and I just met so many incredible people. The thing about solo traveling is that it really forces you to be a lot more open than you're used to. It forces you to way out of your comfort zone and that's kind of exactly what I needed to really throw myself back into traveling again after being home in Canada for so long. And so, I'm sorry, it's getting really dark. The sun just went away. But yeah, so being in Istanbul, um, very busy very difficult to get a taxi so make sure that wherever you're staying is walkable or you don't mind learning the public transit system for me i don't like taking public transportation for no reason other than the fact that i always get lost so <laughs> i um really like to walk i don't mind walking places and so i stayed in a very walkable part of town a very busy part of town and i loved it it was incredibly enjoyable very easy to get in your daily exercise because of all the hills and yeah, there's nothing crazy that went wrong in Turkey. It's very affordable if you have the Western dollar again. So it makes things a whole lot easier to um, enjoy life beyond the basic necessities. So that was a huge draw to me. It was eight hours ahead of the East Coast time. So it was also kind of good for me when it comes to work because I am a night owl and not always a morning person so in turkey i didn't have to be a morning person i could start work later in the day and still be ahead of my whole team so i could get things done i could do my slow 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 morning routine if i did wake up in the morning and everything was just good so i really enjoyed my time living in turkey um but yeah i just uh, wanted to take this time to share about life living abroad i know that when you're young it is really important to sort of take those risks and honestly at any point in your life it's important to step out of your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty and for a lot of the time that i was sort of leading up to beginning to solo travel and you know dipping my toes into it i learned very quickly that life is too short to just only stay in my own city and never leave and always wait on my friends to travel or wait for um, a partner to travel with and although those things can be great and fun for their own reasons i really loved living 
alone in six countries at 23. It's a very eye-opening experience and I um, would love to have these chats again. I don't think I have anything else to say about this per se right now, but if you have anything to add or you're looking to live abroad and you want me to do a topic on a certain video, go ahead and leave a comment for me down below. I'd love to read it, maybe make a video on it. Um, our next chats will probably be about maybe some solo travel stuff, maybe some self-love stuff, we'll see. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Uh, let me know if you like longer videos, shorter videos. I like to talk, so I probably will be doing longer videos, but hopefully I'll drop in some like images and videos here and there so that it'll make it a little bit more exciting than just seeing me talk to you guys the whole time. But thank you for watching. Thank you if you made it this far. Be sure you give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!